Great, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to look at something that really doesn't have a physical product. We're going to look at a university. Okay. So first of all, let's look at the supplier side of the university. Well, the, probably the most important commodity for a university are students. And I hate to call students commodities, but I think you get the idea. We're looking at this from a manufacturing diagram perspective, right? So you look at suppliers. Well, high schools. Okay? High schools supply students. You might look at exchange universities. Of course, your exchange university is going to supply students like from study abroad programs, things like that. And you might look at companies. A lot of companies provide services like executive education, you know, people that have been out of university for a while, but the university has contracted to do a little bit of extra training. So what does the high school provide? They provide students who, oh, and one more, community colleges. I forgot that. Okay, it's community. So what does they provide high school? It provides traditional students. Exchange universities, what do they provide? Exchange students. Companies, what do they provide? Executive education students. Community colleges, what do they provide? Probably non-traditional students. Okay? What would the process look like? Now, if you're going to do this if you were actually doing this for real, not just as a hypothetical example, you'd actually have a separate set of processes for each, but you don't need to overthink this. Just I just want you to understand the basics for this video. You'd have one process map for traditional students, one for exchange students, one for executive ed students, and one for non-traditional students. But for just purposes of illustration, we're going to assume that the process is pretty much the same for all four groups. So student registers. Okay, they register for class, they take class, take exam, get grade, and then they graduate. Okay? That's pretty much going to be the same for any one of these groups. Okay? What is the output? Student with qualifications slash diploma slash certificate. Okay? And of course, who are the customers? You could just go right across the board. Traditional students, exchange students. Ed and non treads. Okay? Now, you're thinking, wait a second, the customers are the same as the inputs? Yes, in this case, because you're taking students that don't have the educational qualifications that you're offering and you transfer them into students that do have those qualifications. That's all you've done. Okay? So for this reason, the customers and the inputs are going to be the same. Okay, now let's look again at the bottom. We'll start with quality. Well, we know from the voice of the customer perspective, students want an education that gets them a job. Okay. What's going to be the input metric? Well, you'd actually have a separate one for each of these, right? But if the traditional students, for example, um, might need, let's think about this one for a second. I'm improvising here. What kind of input metrics? Well, in order to get a job, the students would need, uh, what, do traditional, what do traditional students want the most? Maybe individualized attention. I think that makes sense. So 
made for traditional students, you say individualized attention. For exchange students, you'd say, if you're in the U.S., English language instruction, executive ed, marketable skills for the company, non-traditional, you might say, they need, um, they need the certificate, okay? But individualized attention will assume for traditional students, okay? What kinds of things do we need to have for a process metric? Maybe all classes, less than eight students. Okay. Output metric, students who have almost a tutorial experience. Actually, let me rephrase that one. The output metric could be something like, maybe not individualized attention, but let's make this easy, 95% get a job in six months. And that's an indication of the quality of the education. Okay? Student wants a job, voice the customer, input metrics. In order to help get them a job, we give them individualized attention. All classes are going to be less than eight students for the process metric. Output metric, 95% get a job within six months. That's quality. Let's look at speed. Okay? Voice of the customer. Let's get those students out in four years. That's what they want. Okay? Input metric. We need to make sure that, well, in this case, for an input metric, maybe you cap the classes. Cap, cap intake. To whatever your university is, 5K per year. Why I say cap the intake, Let's say that you have a university that can only take 5,000 students per class, okay? If you took in more than that, you'd wind up crowding out your classes and maybe not everybody gets out in four years. That's why I'm saying that, okay? And that might be something for traditional students to consider. Let's say you're a big university. Each class has about 5,000 students per class. You need to make sure you don't let in more than 5,000 students uh, per year, okay? How does the process work for that? Okay, we want to make sure that all students can register for the classes they need. Maybe register and pass. Output metric, 95% get out in four years. And there's your speed. Okay, cost. And let's say the university, in order to sustain itself, needs to make 15% profit. Okay? The input metric, so voice of business, the university needs to make 15% profit in order to continue its growth. The input metric might be you need to charge a certain amount of tuition per year. Maybe it's 30000 a year. Tuition. Okay? Process metrics could be things like charging the students the correct amount of money and also helping with scholarships in case some students can't pay. Okay. Output metric. Profit is greater than 15%, greater or equal to and that's your cost. Okay? So this is the second example of a side pocket diagram, and we're looking at a university. I hope this second example is also helpful. If you have any uh, questions, make sure you post them down in the comments below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, it's like a like. Make sure you subscribe. Great. So in our next couple of videos, we're actually going to look at a value stream map, okay? Again, for a coffee shop and then for a university. Awesome. I'll see you in the next video.